I got to know the entire country. I got to know the entire country, all of every district, every village. I might not remember the names anymore, but <laughs> I've been there. Every village. I mean, I look back and I, I said, wow, what a what a treasure. What a treasure that I that I discovered and um was able to walk away with not too many people. You talk, you hear about people being a tourist in their own country. I never thought of it then that I was a tourist in my own country. I just loved every moment of it. And I, I used to spend some time in the, in the national collection, as, as we called it at that time. We didn't have, it was not until after a few years we had an archives. But this was the archives, the national collection. And I spent time in there reading books on, on the villages and, and the tongues and their origin and whatnot. So that um, when I went out to the villages, I, I had some idea and some information as to where I was going and, and what I was doing. The, the, the amount of people you got to know, you know, all those... Um, all those schools, as I said, they, one of the teachers, they were the librarians at the schools. Um, they had a few branch libraries back then, um, not as many as they do now. But like I said, the, the library has tentacles. It reaches out, I think, in so many ways. And they had these programs um, for children as well. I continued my connection with the library through doorstep tales. And it was, again, some of the experiences I've had with the library are so nostalgic in so many ways because I was asked to come to the um, North Front Street, the Children's Library, to read to kids there on Saturdays. And I'd been away from the library for a while because I hadn't gone to the Children's Library for quite some time. I'd grown out of going there in terms of having gone away, studied and that kind of thing. I remember that was such a, it, it was so nostalgic because I went back and here was this room still sitting there that I had been in when I was eight years old. And now I'm an adult and I'm back in this room. But this time I have little kids sitting around me on the floor while I was reading to them from different books. It wasn't anything necessarily from that I'd written. But I remember, you know, looking down at them and while I was reading to them, I'd say to myself, I was here just like you guys are, but at my, in my day, there was nobody doing any doorstep tales or reading for me. I had to do all of my own reading. The library holds so much special memories for me. And it's interesting, until now, I have not kind of collected it the way I have. And this opportunity you have given me now to be able to do that, crystallize all those bits and pieces that I hadn't ever kind of put together. And then as I grew a little older, the library, the library kept somehow getting into my life. And I guess there's something about having been there and having gone through the experiences I have gone through that I remember you had to meet the author by the Heritage Library. The Meet the Author initiative was set up to recognize Belizean authors who have been publishing over time. And so it was not necessarily that you had a recent publication. We just looked at your record of Share My Song, of the different inputs in papers. I believe it was She, you know, okay. the publication She and Memories, Dreams, and Nightmares. So we said, okay, Dr. Karen Martha Lewis, you know, the, the young okay. people would say, let's give her her things, you know, okay. let's uh, honor her in this Meet the Author event. I, sh I should mention that um, in the early days, the the Branches, as we call them now, were established in the five, six main tongues. But these were just a few a box of books that was deposited in the district commissioner's office. The district commissioner was, was the term used in those days in his office. And they were just left there. And I don't think they were used very much because it was not in the interest of any of the clerks in the office to, to, to act as, as library workers. And so um, that, that, that after a while, we, that, that was removed and uh, we sought out um, other accommodation for the, for the, um, for the books. And this, this was done mostly in, um, 
as you say, in some schools, in um, the town, town halls, town, town boards, town board buildings. And um, even in one or two instances, they, they were um, in, enclosed in um, people's private homes. Yeah, some some um, people had the, the, uh, space in their lower flat and the library could be established there. But if, if, as, as far as getting to these spaces, it was not very easy. Um, we, I recall with them um, traveling with them, um, the then chief librarian, Leo Bradley, to Punta Gorda by, by boat, by Heron H. And it, it took quite, quite a long time to get there. We leave here about two in the afternoon and arrive in Punta Gorda about seven or eight the following morning. So that, that was, <laughs> that, 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 that was uh, the, 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 the traveling um, time and distance. At, um, when, when, once we got there, we, we would spend maybe about five or six days because it, we, we had one or two sub-libraries in, um, in, the, in, the, in the district too that we would um, travel to, San Antonio, and then one or two others, but even, even Barranco at the time. And um, that, that was going by, by boat. And traveling over land, it was strictly by um, um, private um, transportation, public transportation, the, the, the bus, bus lines. I remember using Bati bus and um, Sabanese bus and the, that type of thing. And um, because we, the library at that time didn't, uh, couldn't afford any um, of its own transportation. This didn't come about until in 19, I, I forget the year, but it was the British Council who was um, stationed in Belize. And they, they had a library and they had a vehicle. And when they left Belize, they left the Land Rover with, with the library. And so at that time, we were able to, to, to get to more places rather than just the public transportation. But in those days also, the, 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 road, the roads were not um, in good condition. And um, so it took a long time to get to places like um, Cayo, and especially Cayo and Corozal. There were some libraries that were built back in the early days, like I think under Mr. Vernon's um, management. Mm -hmm. I think PG was one of them, and I think Orange Walk was one and also Corozal, and some of the others that came afterwards were Dangriga, for example, mm -hmm. Ignacia Cacho Library, the Alanata's Library. But mm. I must mention that Ignacia Cacho Library was also pushed by Mr. Cornelius Cacho, who not only gave the land, but he also gave a significant portion of the funds to to build and government placed the, the rest. And so we were able to put together the Ignacia Kacha Library. Really? Um, yes, Ooh. that's right. And it's named after his mother in honor of her. So that's why the, if the name is Ignacia Kacha Library. That's, so we that's, had, a, that's a story that needs to be retold indeed. That's good. Oh, definitely. Um, and, and shortly following that, we also had the Alanotas Library, which was at the time. Um, we also had developing very quickly, I think our focus after we had more or less pushed all our branch libraries, we started to develop our community libraries. Mm. And for the most part, we were looking at at least two or three community libraries a year, and sometimes less, but sometimes more. A an interesting story too, and one I'd like to tell is of mm -hmm. a lady by the name of Mary Beisner in mm -hmm. San Pedro, mm. who, um, who decided that she would like to help us to put a library in San Pedro because we needed one there. I see. And between her and her husband, um, they came up with the funds to, to build a library and, and we asked permission for us to place the library on, on, on a piece of government's property and that was it so several of our libraries came up in that way some of it came up through the efforts of um, the community mm. 
others came up to interested citizens who were able to to help us excellent the um the san pedro library i think is right on the beach no near near the beach am i right it's right on the beach yes <laughs> and I, so an excellent an excellent place to to study and and relax at the same time i suppose it is yeah. it is I came to work at the Belize National Library Service at that point. And there I was given the responsibility of public libraries. Um, I was responsible for the public libraries in the North and West, along with the community libraries in those areas. My colleague was responsible for the South, and the city. So from there on, I have, from 2000, I have been at the library, at the Belize National Library Service. And I have gradually moved up from librarian to principal librarian to now chief librarian. 